I'm Richard Coulter, Head of Marketing for Fujitsu's Network Business, and I'm here with Daryl Whitlock, System Integration Practice Lead. We're here to talk about EMS transformation and how APIs, containerization, and microservices are helping to create a more sustainable and secure network. Thanks for coming, Daryl. Absolutely, thanks for having me here. Great, let's, let's start first with a definition. What is EMS transformation or digital transformation? So EMS transformation is all about helping customers modernize their network management plane. Um, with uh, recent technology changes, improvements like SDN, microservices, cloud native architecture, there's been a lot of improvements and customers need to look at what they currently have to modernize their environment to take full advantage of those capabilities. Also, a lot of the network element management systems are fairly old. They don't utilize these technologies. So how do you address that as well? Yeah, so great. So we're, we're bringing in new technology. So why is it important and why is this coming up now? So there's a lot of legacy EMSs that have been out there for 10, 20 years or more. Um, they're end of life, they're no longer supported, uh, but the equipment's still there, it's not going away. Um, the network equipment takes a long time before it uh, is removed from the, uh, the network. So one of the things we're looking at is how do we continue to manage those devices with the newer technologies um, so that they can take advantage of those uh, advances. Um, so cloud native and SDN, as I mentioned, have brought in microservices, um, open APIs, uh, containerization. So that all has improved um, how the network's being managed. So we want to look at how we can make more use of that in managing legacy devices to, to remove them. Um, the legacy devices, as I mentioned, are old. So the EMSs are running on platforms that are you know, 15, 20 years old. The hardware's old, starting to fail. It's on older operating systems that have security flaws. This opens you up to issues managing your network. And if you don't address it, you could be having a network that you cannot actually manage, you can't see it. So if there's problems in the network, you're not gonna be able to fix them. So we need to look at how we can improve upon managing those devices and keep the uh, equipment running even longer. Um, Microservices and containerization is new technology for telecom. Uh, a lot of providers are moving towards cloud native architectures overall. So they need a roadmap to get these systems into that environment um, and continue to manage the equipment. Um, legacy EMSs have been left behind, right? They're there, all this new technology is starting to be deployed in uh, the provider's environments. Now we need to look at how we can improve upon the legacy EMSs. Yeah, it's a really interesting challenge. Like, yes. like you're saying that the EMSs are old and the hardware platforms are on is old, but you want to keep the equipment in the network to right. keep generating that revenue. So a really big challenge. Now, what, what are the other challenges that you face when, when you're trying to transform those EMSs? So it all starts with working with customers to understand their objectives. Because um, every customer is different, they've got different uh, equipment that's there, different systems. They have different goals and where they're going. So first thing is, is to get a, a clear definition of what their ultimate goal is and to get all the teams in line with that because you've got your IT side and your admins that are managing the systems and they've got their own objective of keeping the systems up and running versus your maintenance teams that are looking more, I need to troubleshoot the network. So they've got different priorities and coming to a common agreement on what the future network should look like um, needs to be worked out up front. Um, the other, another challenge that they have is the network is made up of a lot of different technologies, right? Broadband, optical, layer three. You need someone that can go across all those different layers and understand what's going on to build an overall strategy. Um, so th there's an issue with resources in trying to gather all that information. Um, lastly, company priorities. You know, is it going in and modernizing your management network that may not improve or add to revenue, um, but it's going to reduce your risk and hopefully improve your operations. So all of those things need to be looked at to make sure that you're, you know, 
going down and meeting that strategy that you've defined up front. Yeah, that, that, that's, uh, that's really interesting. The, this challenge is really coming back to you know, what's the priority for right. that carrier. All right, so we talked about some examples, but now what are the benefits of EMS transformation? Okay. So management networks have evolved over the last 20, 30 years uh, with different technologies, different vendors, different equipment that's coming in. Um, and it's, a lot of it's still there. So it's a very mixed set of uh, systems that are currently managing the uh, network. So as you transform it and modernize, there's a number of benefits you're gonna get. So one is extending the life of the network equipment itself. A lot of that equipment's been there. It's making revenue for the customers. They don't need to replace it. Um, but they do need to manage it. And some of those systems are, are having challenges being able to manage it. So by modernizing, you're gonna extend the uh, life of the equipment that's actually in the network itself. Um, it also allows you to integrate to newer OSSs. So the newer OSSs that are coming in are using newer APIs. They don't necessarily uh, support the legacy systems as is, right? Um, the older systems are using SNMP, CORBA, older protocols that the newer OSSs just don't support. Um, so without modernizing, that makes it a little bit harder to integrate those legacy systems into the uh, OSSs. So modernization helps with that. Um, modernization also helps with security and uh, support. So some of these systems are so old that they're end of life they're not supported by the, uh, the vendors or the vendors no longer exist. So migrating to a new system alleviates that problem. Um, you can deploy using the, the latest OSSs, you can apply security fixes to it, and obviously you can get support from the vendor. Um, it also allows vendors or, or providers, I should say, to deploy systems that are more in line with their overall cloud native strategy. Um, Obviously, the older systems aren't container-based and uh, cloud-native, so it doesn't really tie into their, their long-term vision. By upgrading to uh, newer systems, it's more in line with where they want to get to. And then by doing all this, it's going to allow the provider to streamline their operations. They can automate as much as they can, um, integrate it with all the systems so that you've got complete coverage by the systems you know, across all the FCAPs. So overall, it's going to help improve their operations and improve their time to go and resolve issues as they're coming up in the network. Wow, yeah. Longer revenue, simplified operations, better security. It, it, it seems like a, a no-brainer, really. Absolutely. So I, I know you've been through EMS transformations with a number of customers now, so maybe you can talk to us about some of the benefits you've seen in, in those projects that, that the carriers have actually recognized. Okay, so um, we've had a few different uh, projects that we've worked through. Um, one of them was looking at uh, a large number of legacy EMSs and a number of instances of each one um, that are running on old hardware, the hardware's starting to fail, they don't have replacements for them, so you know, when problems come up, they, they really scramble to try to get the system back up and running. Um, and there's security risks with some older OSSs. So, you know, if the systems are no longer supported, there's no patches coming in, those security risks are there. And sooner or later, there's going to be an issue. So you want to try to address those. Um, so consolidating all these into a common system allows you to uh, eliminate a number of EMSs have a common platform that's based on the new technology and uh, keep moving forward. Um, another project that we worked on was more of a consulting uh, engagement where we looked at all the EMSs that were coming over and helped the customer build a strategy of trying to move to cloud native but also addressing um, those systems that couldn't move, how do they handle them? And some of that is retire in place. Uh, you don't necessarily have the opportunity to move everything over to a common platform. So you've got to build a strategy that can be flexible in both of those uh, areas. Um, the last one was working with a customer to understand how they want to uh, modernize their transport network. 
they have options to go with different vendors and different solutions, but they also want to be able to go very quickly. They want agile. They want to be able to come in and modify things or introduce new capabilities without relying on a vendor. So again, looking at the systems they have, what are their options, and coming up with an overall strategy to be able to meet those goals. Yeah, yeah, that, those are really interesting challenges and, and, and cool benefits that, that you get out of the transformation. So if, if a carrier wanted to actually start a, a transformation project, what, what are the first steps that they need to take to, to actually begin? Okay. So the first step is setting those goals. As I mentioned, everyone has a different view of where they need to take this. Um, but it could be you're trying to eliminate risk. Um, it could be you want to consolidate a number of systems down into a fewer number. Um, it could be that you're trying to get to cloud native across all your systems. So coming up with that upfront goal is, is critical. And then working with the different teams to make sure everyone's in aligned, right? As I mentioned, different teams have different priorities. So you want to make sure that everyone's aligned up front. Last thing you want to do is go through six, 12 months <clears throat> of a, a program and then get to the end where two different groups differ on what needs to be there and you know, it's not a workable solution. Um, once you've got that, then you need to understand the whole environment. Um, there's a number of different systems, right? You could have 15 different EMSs. So you need to go and understand each of those EMSs, what's the equipment that is managing, what are the capabilities of that EMS that are being used, and then how can you migrate to something new that covers all the equipment and allows you to do the maintenance that you need to do. Um, and then you start rolling out into production. Um, these systems, you don't necessarily want to do a flash cut. You want to get it out there, move some equipment over, make sure everyone's good with it, and then you can start turning down those other older EMSs. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's uh, an interesting start. Just finding those common goals and aligning those ac across customers, always, always super important. So. Now that they've started, you've kind of walked through and created common goals. Maybe you can walk us through a, a couple examples of the, the projects that you've seen uh, in the industry. Okay, so a couple of the projects, um, one was consolidation of a large number of EMSs. Um, there, there's a customer that had 17 different EMSs that they wanted to uh, migrate to new technology. So we've been looking at what are those EMSs? How do we consolidate them into a single EMS and move them over? Um, adding to that is scale, right? So because we're managing so many different EMSs and all the equipment, it has to scale very high, um, 100,000 devices versus each EMS maybe five to 8,000. So as part of all this, building that architecture and uh, making sure all the capabilities are built in is what we've been working towards. And we've migrated a um, couple EMSs so far. We're working on two more right now, um, managing about 50,000 devices. Wow. So that's, that's one. Um, the other was the consulting um, project that we did where we looked at 34 different EMSs to see how the customer is going to be able to uh, incorporate that into their overall uh, strategy to go cloud native. Um, we've identified a number of different uh, um, avenues that they can follow. They can consolidate into a multi-vendor EMS. They can keep some EMSs as they are. There's a few that they're going to have to keep around because there's just nothing they can do uh, with that EMS and they can't get rid of it. Um, so again, each one's a little bit different. They all start slightly differently and they all have different solutions. Yeah, uh, awesome. So how, how has Fujitsu been in, involved in, in helping the customers with these programs? What, what's our role and what's our, role? Kind of what, what's our benefit? Okay, so Fujitsu has been working with cloud native architectures for quite a few years. So we've, we have an SDN controller, um, we've got an AI platform, we're using containerization of microservices in our, in our products. So we've got a lot of background um, over the last say six, seven years with those technologies. Um, we're also uh, supporting a lot of the open APIs. So we have an open controller 
Um, we've got a orchestrator that uses a lot of the TMF uh, open APIs. These are all critical components to be able to uh, modernize um, customers' networks. So we're taking all that knowledge. We've built a good team of experts around EMSs and the cloud native technologies. Um, and we're using that experience to go to customers and um, understand what their goals are and help build strategies around that. Um, we've done a few projects so far, but we're, we're looking to help more and more customers. This is just the start of the EMS transformation, right? Um, these technologies, although they're mature, they're only really starting to get rolled out at customers. Um, and it doesn't address the legacy devices and EMSs. So there is a, a lot of work for all customers to be able to look at that legacy portion and see how they can migrate to the newer technologies and make you know, the best use of those technologies to improve their operations. Yeah, absolutely. A, a critical and timely topic. We, we know anytime you look at the news, security is a huge issue. And, absolutely. and with these aging systems that have been there, probably decades, decades, you know that has to be a huge challenge. So to make the network more secure, more reliable, um, and, and to make sure that you have availability in customer traffic, this is a critical step for any customer Absolutely. that wants a more secure and more reliable network. So thank you, Daryl, for your time today. Absolutely. Really appreciate it. Thank you.